Good morning. Oh, sorry that my glasses have not turned the color yet. It's going to turn pretty soon. Yeah, so I'm the only cool guy with sunglasses in the room <laughs> <laughs> the cold day. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're here to celebrate our newly promoted associate professors, uh, Mohit Verma, Maria Onkonowski, uh, David Johnson is not here yet. Uh, Luis Solores is here. Yeah, congratulations to your success. Uh, now you don't need to listen to deans anymore. <laughs> 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 yeah, so this event, uh, we'll listen to each of our newly tenured prof associate professors' success stories, how they enjoy their research, and their reflections on the path to their successes. Each success story is unique, so I'm, re I'm really looking forward to listening uh, to those. Uh, to start with, uh, I want to introduce uh, Professor Nate Mosier, head of ABE department, uh, to introduce our first speaker. Thank you, Wayne. So, uh, yes, I'm Nate Mosier. I'm the department head in agricultural and biological engineering, and it's my great pleasure this morning to introduce Dr. Mohed Verma, uh, newly promoted associate professor. Um, as uh, Dean Chen mentioned, uh, all of the speakers today are asked to reflect a little bit on their path to get here, so I'm not going to give a biographical details for Mohit, but I want to brag on him just a little bit, some, some things that, in my reflection, uh, on his uh, time here at Purdue University that's led to some of his successes. And I'll so, sort of point to two sort of key things. Number one, uh, Mohit is very entrepreneurial, so he thinks about where he, there are opportunities and how to go after opportunities and do so aggressively, uh, whether that is in research, whether that is in teaching, whether that is in developing teams, whether that is going after grant funding. Um, he has this entrepreneurial mindset, and he may even talk a little bit about his uh, startup company that he's founded as well. Part two that I would say in my reflection of Mohit that he does extraordinarily well is that he is a team builder and a collaborator. <clears throat> so you may uh, hear a little bit in his reflections about how he's formed very diverse teams in approaching research, diverse in terms of backgrounds, in terms of expertise, in terms of organizations that are involved in the research that he does. So these are public-private partnerships. He has uh, developed teams that involve uh, foundations, companies, faculty from multiple colleges, uh, all in, as part of uh, bringing together teams that to do this effectively. And, and you may speak a little bit about uh, the Purdue Applied Microbiome Science Center as well, of which he is a, a member of uh, in addition. So uh, these are some qualities, I think, that uh, are part of his uh, road to success. And uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome him here to tell his story, and please join me in welcoming him. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for that kind introduction, Nate. Um, as you all know by now, my name is Mohit Verma. Um, I'm now an associate professor in ag and biological engineering. I also have a courtesy in biomedical engineering. Um, and a reflection of first, how did I get here, right? Um, and I've written about this in a blog called lifeofaprofessor.com. So that's my blog. Um, and one of the most viewed articles is this one right here, what is tenure? Because um, people are curious, I think, just from the public, and um, even in uh, even students maybe don't really understand what professors do and so on. That's really what's um, got me to start this blog. Um, so there's some important articles there. What I'll highlight is this graphic over here, um, which kind of shows you a typical path, and that's pretty much my path as well um, for becoming a faculty member. Um, started with an undergrad, and you'll still see the stick figure gaining more and more credentials. So uh, you'll see it starts with a degree. Uh, my degree was in nanotechnology engineering from the University of Waterloo in Canada. Um, and the red kind of bars are the milestones. Uh, on the y-axis, it's relatively how hard it is to get across those milestones, from my perspective at least. Um, and um, after undergrad, you go on and specialize to a PhD. Um, I continued on at the University of Waterloo, focusing on nanotechnology. 
um, have a PhD in chemical engineering, and um, it's become very typical to go and try to get a postdoc position, um, which I did at Harvard with George Whitesides um, for a couple of years. And during that time, you get to learn um, a wide variety of things, not just your technical skills, advancing the science, but all, in my case, also how to communicate better um, and the importance of communication, really, both oral and written. Um, and I think the biggest hurdle, really, is from that point trying to get a tenure track position. Um, because typically the number of jobs available versus the number of candidates, um, the ratio um, is pretty challenging. Um, at least that's what I found. Um, so when I landed a position here at Purdue, that was one of the biggest achievements, and that's why I put that as a very high milestone. Um, and um, after you get here, Purdue is actually a very supportive um, environment because they want you to succeed. Um, so that's what I found. Um, and most universities are like that. So they have all kinds of resources to help you get there, get tenure, basically. Um, and that's where uh, one of the key things is now you become a mentor, right? So um, you train other students, and that ranges all the way from undergrads, grad students, postdocs. Um, we have some visiting scholars as well. Um, and once you get that, um, you get tenure. Hopefully, <laughs> um, so that's really uh, that's that's been my journey so far. And um, the future typically goes on to expand your um, network, build some international collaborations, um, and hopefully become a professor maybe for life. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. So that's been the journey so far. Um, more details are on the blog um, if people are interested. Uh, one of the key things, and Nate kind of mentioned this. Um, is once I got here, how did I succeed, right? Um, and it builds on um, really finding out what's going on at Purdue. Like, for example, I wasn't really familiar with agriculture and biological engineering until I got here. So I got to learn a lot about the problems in agriculture, the advances that we can make from biological engineering and apply it there. Um, got to connect with a lot of colleagues on campus, across colleges for sure. Uh, within the college as well. Um, and my um, approach had really been first just to learn what's going on. Um, and one of the kind of key moments happened very early once I got to Purdue. It was at a networking event actually between the College of Agriculture and College of Engineering. Um, and they were trying to kind of initiate new programs. I was sitting next to um, Aaron Ault, who is a uh, feedlot operator. So he operates cattle feedlot. And he was kind of just complaining about this problem that he has about his cattle getting sick. He doesn't know which antibiotics to use. And I was like, there must be a solution. There wasn't. So we're like, OK, why don't we do it? You know, As an assistant professor, um, you have some uh, leeway into what you want to start working on. And we had that freedom. So we, that's, that was like a key moment to get started on my lab, um, start working on an important problem. Because you know that there really is a problem. If you come up with a solution, someone will actually use it. And it will make a difference. We, of course, validated that it was a big enough problem, and it was. Um, and that led to, very initially, um, some <coughs> Purdue internal support. And those are, um, on the plot over here, what you see is the x-axis is just the time since I got here. Those are really just submission dates. Um, the y-axis, so these are just successful awards. The y-axis is cumulative award. Um, and that red line over there is basically what a typical startup package is uh, for the faculty members to get here. Um, so the initial dots you see, those are internal funds or small external funds. Um, just to prove your concept, show that this is actually an interesting um, project, interesting idea. Um, a lot of these are internally supported. Um, and then you'll see some big jumps um, the, that are happening. Uh, the laser pointer isn't great, but um, you'll see some big jumps that happen on the um, on the y-axis, uh, for example, one of the biggest ones was when we got uh, this USDA grant um, through NIFA for that same problem, the cattle problem, the trying to solve the bovine respiratory disease uh, problem. And that was a million dollars. And that really kind of set me up to be like, OK, we can actually get external funding. We can build a sustainable lab. Um, and once we got that, um, we had a platform technology, a technology that could do diagnostics um, out in the field. It could be applied to a variety of different applications. Um, so we took it from cattle health um, during the pandemic. 
we looked at looking at COVID-19, so detecting SARS-CoV-2, for example, and those were some um, big kind of uh, external sources. We expanded that to a new innovator award looking at uh, viruses in cattle as well, um, just kind of expanding the breadth, um, also looking at antibiotic resistance genes, um, and then kept building it towards other animal diseases. For example, um, in this case, the other big one is African swine fever, which is in uh, pigs, and it can be a big problem if it ever gets here. It is a problem internationally. Um, and that's, this is kind of where uh, my tenure package would have gone in, so that's what it was evaluated on. Um, when I initially joined Purdue, there weren't really, and I think this is still true, um, every case is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no real number, or at least firm numbers, but at least unofficially, what I heard was you should at least try to um, match what Purdue is starting you off of. So at least get to the startup level. If better, that's, that's even better. I'm not sure the deans and them can comment on, those, on, those, uh, on that news, but at least uh, that's, that's what I was told. Um, so my milestone was like at least meet that red mark and go a little bit beyond. And we were successful in doing that. Um, and most recently, what we've done is expanded this uh, towards looking at um, taking a more One Health approach, expanding beyond just livestock, looking at other animals, wildlife, and so on, and see if we can do surveillance of SARS-CoV-2 using similar technologies. All of this would not be possible if I was just doing this by myself, and that's what Nate commented on. So um, almost half of our work is things that we are expert at and we do kind of ourselves. The other half is basically things that I'm working with collaborators, um, uh, working with co-PIs, uh, because they actually have the expertise of animal sciences, for example, of um, wildlife sciences, uh, working uh, with uh, industrial partners. So all of that, um, it's been really fun because that's when you know that you're working with a relevant problem. Otherwise, as engineers, this is very common. We come up with really fancy tools which maybe don't really have a use. We try to find a use. Um, so we try to work the other way around, and that's been working out well for us. Um, and the example, some of the examples I've already mentioned, so for example, um, the BRD project is listed on the left over there. Uh, we're, we're actually going, and, and one of the things we also do is take it from, all the way from the lab, so we're developing new technologies and go out and test it in the field. So we're doing the whole scale, and that's only really possible if you have the right partners in place. Um, and you can see uh, we've worked with uh, industrial partners as well for COVID-19. That was quite an experience because it was a very rapid development that helped us um, get work done that would have taken several years in maybe nine months, six to nine months. Um, so that really helped develop the technology itself, and that expanded on to um, applications in animal health. But at the bottom, you also see for food safety. So we're actually helping the food safety industry as well to help detect what kind of risks might be present. What we're kind of... Um, and all of this, of course, um, I'm not the one doing all the work. <laughs> it's all the grad students and uh, the trainees and undergrads and postdocs. Um, I have a limited list, really, of the people that have gone through the lab over here. Um, this photo is also outdated because we haven't had the time to update it. But um, um, really, uh, it's been fun to work with um, all the grad students, all the postdocs, um, undergrads, visiting scholars, and so on. And they're really the ones who do the work, right? They're the ones who actually go out in the field, uh, develop new technologies, and really the credit goes to them to execute everything. Um, especially uh, as we're moving more and more towards testing things out in the field, a lot of people are really unfamiliar. Like, I'm also unfamiliar, so we're learning together. Um, they're learning the skills to test these technologies, get feedback, work with stakeholders. Um, so it's been a learning process, but it's been very valuable um, to be able to do this. So really the credit goes to all of these people and the collaborators, um, which uh, it's a long list, so I won't mention in detail, but it does cut across multiple different colleges. Um, where do we go from here? Um, so as I mentioned, my starting story was really because there was a problem uh, that needed to be solved, and that's how we started doing this research. We've kind of built upon that, and I have a startup company that is, take, that is taking the technology developed in my lab and trying to commercialize that. So um, really turning into a faculty entrepreneur. Uh, Christy Diagnostics is the startup. Um, we're trying to build that up. Um, our initial market will probably be towards companion animals, um, and uh, we're building on that. We've raised some money um, in investment. Uh, we're raising more money and trying to hopefully get a product out um, next year is our goal. Um, so 
you'll probably see a little bit more of that. Um, and on the research side of things, what we've done is we've done uh, applications on, for example, animal health, um, plant or environmental health from a food safety perspective, a little bit of human health, um, and now we're also looking at some wildlife um, health. Um, in the long term, what I would like to do is kind of try to start integrating these things, take a one health approach, see how factors from one system affect the other and how we can control them to try to, for example, uh, limit the spread of antibiotic resistance, uh, detect new em emerging infectious diseases earlier, um, and try to build systems that are smarter um, than what we have available now. Try to do it out in the field rather than depending everything on a lab-based method. Um, and to do this, we are expanding our tool set, so the things that we've already developed so that we're good at, we're building that further, but also looking into new tools such as the um, AI-based tools. I mean, this image, for example, was generated using Adobe Illustrator AI tools, right? Um, so that is taking off, and we're just kind of starting to get into understanding how we can leverage that for uh, our applications. Um, and that is it. So thank you, everyone, for joining. Appreciate your time. Um, thank you for having me. Back on. I think we've got time <clears throat> for a question or two, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm right. So are there anybody from the audience with a question? Could you go back to the, your chart that your years versus research awards? Yes. So the dean's office would like to see the end has the aspirational trend. <laughs> but of course, you don't have to listen to the dean's office anymore. <laughs> but. When I see it's a flattened off, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> it doesn't include the submitted stuff, so. It's the current year, Wayne. Other questions? Thank you. Hello, congratulations on the start of your um, startup, but also um, your promotion. What tips do you have for aspiring faculty entrepreneurs on how to balance the demands of both worlds? Yeah, um, it's not easy, that's for sure. <laughs> um, and um, I was fortunate because um, my startup aligns quite well with what we do in the lab. So, and everything is relatively streamlined in the sense that we're developing technologies for our research for the lab and we license that out. Um, the startup comes over here and turns it into a product, right? So that part is pretty clear, and Purdue has uh, good systems for making sure your conflicts of interest are in place and so on. Um, so what I did was actually Purdue had an entrepreneurship learning academy. That really helped figure out um, whether you have a market uh, or not, whether you're in the right place or not. And that's a big, big aspect of entrepreneurship that we as faculty members don't really get trained on typically. So I encourage people to look through that if you haven't already. And it's pretty light pace, so it's easy to manage. Uh, they give you lunch uh, every, every week. So, um, and then from there, we had um, internal support first. So we raised some funds from Purdue. Um, things are changing at the time. It was Accelerator. Um, having those funds in place is also beneficial because it helps you get the startup um, set up properly from the legal and IP perspective. Um, once that's done, I would actually recommend getting outside help for managing the business aspects, and that's what we did. That was actually a Purdue uh, PRF kind of recommendation. They helped connect to the right people. We worked, we interviewed a few, um, and then we found a person who had uh, business expertise, but also, in my case, the animal health expertise, which is what we needed, um, and several years, a lot more years than I did. <laughs> so that really helped because now he can take care of all the business aspects, and I can focus on the technology <coughs> aspects. Um, that works out quite well. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mohit. We'll move on to our next speaker. Thank you.